So that's really handy, right? The next thing to think about is like, uh, I would really love, because we can see that these buttons can change color, right? It would be great to know how we could make these buttons change color. And in fact, if we add a MIDI device out, or just a MIDI out chop, we can get down to the meat of that a little bit. So one of the things we need to know is we need to know the exact name of the thing that we want to change. So this is channel 8, note 10. That's part of what we're seeing there. And let's just go ahead and add a constant. So we'll add this constant chop here. And let's make sure, let's make sure that we've given it the same name, channel 8, note 10. And we should be able to see that if we run this value here, sure enough, our color is changing over here. So the next step to do to like figure out the real meat and potatoes of this, if you want to know exactly how your device works, is you want to make sure that you looked up all the information about your device from the manufacturer. You know, Novation has a lovely little piece of documentation that uh, describes how all the mini messaging works. So you don't actually have to do any guessing if you don't want to. Uh, we can do just some kind of like noodling here to track some stuff down. So we can see that we've got three different layers of, uh, of brightness and we can kind of think of those in the 0 0.01 category, 0 0.02, and then also 0 0.03. Oh, three is all the way off. Two nine should be our brightest. I think. Oh, or maybe I'm completely wrong. There we go. Two seven. So that's you know that's pretty sassy. If we did a little bit more kind of noodling, we'll find that there is also another color in this range. There's green. So right, green and an amber. So we also have the ability to think about running those values. And similarly, we're just going to have to map out what those mean. So there are lots of ways that we can begin to think of using this particular set of controls, right? So if I was to go ahead and just close this file down and open up that other file that I had put together earlier, we should be able to see what's actually going on in that whole um, kind of network at this point. I'm going to scoot this right back over here. There we go. So we can see we've got a flashing value here, right? So I've renamed that in this case to channel 8 CC115. I did a little bit of uh, careful investigating and found out this is a control message. Um, and 115 is uh, the index for that that I've got to send. I do a little bit of math to describe what the range is going to be, right? I've just got a single LFO that goes 0 to 1, and I only want that to be 0 to 126 or excuse me, 0 to 0 0.026, and I think we do 27 even, right? And we can also see here, I've gone and done the hard work already of figuring out what all these sliders are, making sure they're all here, as well as all of my buttons. And in my case, what I did is I've used a rename chop to be able to describe those more particularly, right? So now I've got user, when I'm in the user tab, and if I switch over to factory, I'm gonna call, I just decided to call that default. So now we can see how I've got essentially two different sets of um, tools kind of at my disposal in the way that these sliders work, which is really, really handy for me, especially in, uh, you know, kind of a live set kind of installation. We can also see here that I've gone ahead and mapped out these up, down, left, right buttons as well. And I've mapped those out for both the user and factory. So, um, you know, it's, it's useful to know that you have access to just about everything about your controller when you're noodling around with it. Okay, I know that's not particularly a lot of fun, but hopefully that should give you a sense of how MIDI works here inside of Touch Center a little bit more kind of clearly and should put you on the right path to do some fun exploration and work with your device. Happy programming, everyone.